Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this particular session on the clinical sign of the day. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator on Unacademy. So before going ahead with this session, let me just give you the updates from Unacademy. Unacademy has come up with this very important batch courses for the students appearing for upcoming PG entrance exams. They are Mission INICT 2021 batch, clinical examinations and procedures batch. Target Next 2022 Batch, Target Next Integrated Batch 2023. So in order to get subscribed to these batch courses, you can use my code that is LIFEMED, wherein you will get an additional 10% discount on your subscription. Having said this, let me start the clinical sign of the day. So the question is, which of the following drug is responsible for sluggishness of the following sign? Right, I'll just show you the clinical sign first. Right, so you can observe what the patient is being subjected to. Right, a torchlight is shown into the eyes and you can observe the pupillary size, the changes that can be observed. So first of all, what is this particular sign? It is a direct light reflex. So now what is the question? Which of the following drug is responsible for sluggishness of this particular direct light reflex? Options are primidone, pimozide, pethidine, phenytoin. So, out of this, you take this primidone and as well as the phenytoin. Both of these drugs, they are anti-epileptic drugs. Right? Both of these drugs, they are the anti-epileptic drugs. They don't have much effect on the pupillary size, right? They don't affect the light reflex. But whereas you take pethidine, right? The answer is pethidine here. Pethidine, it's an opioid analgesic. And this particular pethidine, which is an opioid analgesic, it has anticholinergic action. So what does this anticholinergics do to the size of the pupil, these anticholinergics, they will cause midriasis, right, where there will be dilatation of the pupil. So because there will be midriasis, that will cause sluggishness of this particular di direct light reflex. So this sign is your direct light reflex that is being elicited. The afferent for the direct light reflex is optic nerve and efferent for the direct light reflex is the oculomotor nerve. Now, you should know what are the conditions where you will have metriasis and what are the conditions where you will have meiosis. So, if you see the conditions where you have metriasis, right, where there is dilatation of the pupil of size more than or equal to 5 mm. So, in infants, there can be midriasis, it is physiological and if there is any lesion to the third cranial nerve, that is midbrain lesion, drugs like atropine and as well as pethidine because of their anticholinergic action, blindness due to optic nerve damage, that is optic atrophy can cause midriasis. Then, what are the conditions where you have the meiosis, right, where there is constriction of the pupil? That can happen in old age. See, in infancy, the individual can have bidriasis, whereas in older age, the individual can have meiosis. And other scenarios are like Horner syndrome, right, where there is a defect in the sympathetic trunk, drugs like neostigmine, right, which is a cholinergic drug, morphine, which is an opioid, organophosphorus poisonings, right, which have the cholinergic effect. All these drugs or toxins, they cause constriction of the pupil. And finally, the pontine hemorrhage, they'll have the pinpoint pupil. So you remember this point. In midbrain damage, which is a part of the brainstem, you have midriasis, dilatation of the pupil. Whereas pontine hemorrhage, which is also the part of the brainstem, the individual will have pinpoint pupil, that is meiosis. Okay, right. Having said this, what is the homework of the day? See, consensual light reflex, right? Whatever is being elicited in the individual is consensual light reflex. Consensual light reflex is elicitable because of bilateral innervation of which particular structure? The options are nucleus ambiguous, edinger westphal nucleus, superior salivary nucleus, inferior salivary nucleus. So please answer this question in the comment box. I will revert back to you with the correct answer. 
Thank you very much and see you in the next session. And before that, let me just wind up this session by informing you a very important limited time offer from Unacademy. Right? The prices have drastically reduced on Unacademy and those students who want to get subscribed to these subscriptions, you can use my code that is LiveMed, wherein you will get an additional 10% discount. Thank you very much.